Hey guys, it's Cam from Craft and Tailored. In this episode of What Is On My Wrist, we're talking about an Omega Flightmaster reference 145.036 with a Cal 911 movement. It's an interesting watch and I'm really excited to have this uh, on wrist to show you guys and uh, let's get into the details. So the Omega Flightmaster is a, is a watch that's kind of a love it or hate it watch. Um, we haven't had too many of them in the shop and I think part of the reason why I haven't brought a lot of these into the shop is I haven't found one with a patina that I like. There's two variants of the Omega Flightmaster and uh, there's actually a lot of sub variants of the reference as well, which makes the watch uh, actually pretty collectible, but I'm a sucker when it comes to condition. And I think for a while these watches were, I think, you know, not as popular. Uh, and I think they're increasing in popularity, but I think a lot of the watches were used. Some of them can be in various uh, elements of condition. And so uh, I really hold out to find watches that are in good condition and this one uh, is in good condition and I've kind of been falling in love with the reference. It, I've been spending some time with this one and on the wrist there's a lot of elements within the watch's complications that really make sense to me. Uh, also it was a watch that I kind of avoided I think for a little while just because I was I guess kind of afraid of its uh, you know, bulkiness or its size, it's quite a large watch. Maybe that's what she said, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really into this example and wanted to share it with you guys. And this has been spending some time on my wrist, so I figured we'd use uh, this time and this example that we have here in the shop to talk about it and share this reference with you because it's quite interesting and the story behind the Flight Master is, is really an amazing one. Uh, tool chronographs dominated the late 1960s and early 1970s, and that was a trend which Omega is due credit for. During this time, Omega created several different chronographs, uh, all with different applications, and one of which was, you know, the, the Flightmaster. The Flightmaster series of chronographs are a variant of the Omega Speedmaster line produced and sold towards pilots from 1969 till about 1977. And the Flightmaster possesses a distinctly oversized 43 millimeter case that includes three crowns, two pushers, and seven hands. Yes, the watch actually has seven hands. It's insane and also amazing at the same time. Not to mention the uh, watch also includes an uh, inner rotating bezel similar to like what we would find in a super compressor. So I like that complication. I actually favor the Mark II or the second version of the Flightmaster more so than uh, the first variant. The Flightmaster series consisted of two distinct variations of the watch and each with a number of specific dial variants within, within each version. There's actually a really incredible book out there that's called Flightmaster Only and that book outlines a bunch of the different variants within the uh, Flightmaster range of, of watches. Uh, interesting to me as I acquired this piece and as I started learning more about Flightmasters, I've always seen them, I've always you know known about them I knew about the two different references, but there's a lot of dial variants which make the reference range really interesting to me. So I'm kind of, I don't know if you could say I've been bitten by the Flightmaster bug, but after spending some time with this one and having brought this into our collection and having, you know, really started to peel back the layers of the Flightmaster onion, so to speak, uh, they're really cool and I'm kind of falling hard for the reference. So the first Flightmaster variant is under the reference 145.013. And that features the Omega 910 movement, which is essentially a highly modified variant of the Omega 861 movement, which you would find in a, a Speedmaster. Basically, the most noticeable element of the uh, 145.013 is that at the three o'clock position on the dial, you have a subdial that is basically an AM PM indicator. So instead of in more of a traditional Speedmaster type format where you have that running sweep seconds hand located at the nine o'clock subdial, you actually have a 24 hour indicator that tells you uh, if it's AM or PM in the time zone of the main set time. Um, additionally, all of the flight masters have an independently operating GMT hand, which is really, really cool. And we'll dive into the functionality of the watch because there's a lot of knobs, pushers, crowns, whatever you want to call them on the watch that serve independent functions. And I think that's really, really cool. So we'll dive into that in, in a minute. But the second variant, which is uh, this version that we're featuring here and kind of talking about, which is the 145.036 is my preferred reference within the Flightmaster range. The reason is 
is because it uses a, a 911 based movement, which is also a modified version of uh, the Cal 861. But the difference is that in a little bit more of a traditional format, similar to the Speedmaster, the uh, nine o'clock subdial has a running seconds hand, uh, which I kind of find more useful uh, versus having an AM PM indicator. And I think the AM PM indicator is kind of cool, but similar to like, uh, let's say like a Rolex Explorer reference 1655, uh, five, like 1655 Explorer 2. I'm not like in a, a submarine and I can just look out a window and, and tell if it's AM or PM. I can understand how that would work in the in the uh, in the 145.013 reference, but also it's kind of a little bit redundant, especially since you have an independently operating GMT hand. So I prefer the 145.036 because um, you have a running seconds hand uh, versus the AM PM indicator. So uh, essentially you have three crowns and two pushers on the watch. The first crown here uh, is just kind of your normal winding crown, which is located here at the three o'clock position. So these movements on any flight master are, uh, they're manually wound. So uh, leveraging that base caliber of an 861 movement which the 910 and, or in this case, the 911 base movement is based off of its, it's a manually wound, you know, chronograph. Uh, and then you have obviously, you know, the first position which sets the time, right? What's really cool is that you also have this crown located here, kind of off of like the seven o'clock or eight o'clock position rather. Um, and then this crown basically operates your uh, inner rotating bezel. So you have an inner rotating bezel similar to let's say like a super compressor where you can set a reference point in time and then you have a, a, a minutes you know, countdown on the, on the outer uh, bezel, which is a really nice feature and also something that is kind of a useful uh, feature as well. So similar to like a dive watch or something like that, obviously this isn't a dive watch per se, but you, you know, you can use it in, in similar fashion. The crown up here at uh, the 10 o'clock uh, position is uh, what operates the independent uh, GMT hand. So the cool thing about that is you have an independent GMT hand um, that runs on a 12 hour or I mean, it runs on 24 hour cycle, but it's a 12 hour cycle essentially. So it doesn't run on a 24 hour scale. So that's kind of interesting as well that instead of it being a 24 hour hand per se, it's uh, you know a, a 12 hour GMT hand, which is you know kind of nice. Also, I think that that is where maybe uh, with the earlier version of the, of the Flight Master, that may be where, you know, kind of the AM PM indicator could have come into play. But uh, again, I think there was a reason why Omega moved away from that 910 movement and ultimately went to the 911 movement with the sweep seconds. So really cool feature set and complication. And then obviously you have your stereotypical kind of, you know, start, stop, and then reset uh, for the chronograph function. So uh, at the uh, three o'clock window, you have a, a 30 minute counter, and then at the six o'clock, you have an hour counter. The cool thing about the dial with the Flightmaster series and the, and the hand layout is that um, they're, I guess what you would call like an exotic dial. So what's really cool and uh, unique about the watch is it kind of feels like a, like a Speedmaster in terms of its layout, but uh, you use kind of these Delta style hands in the, you know, the 30 minute, totalizer and then the hour totalizer, the running sweep seconds hand is like your stereotypical kind of like, uh, I guess you'd call it like a sword hand or, or whatever in the um, running seconds. And then you have this really unique looking GMT hand. It kind of to me looks like a space capsule. I don't know if that was Omega's inspiration behind it, but but it's kind of this blue, you know, GMT hand, which is really, really interesting. And then you also have a Delta sweep seconds hand. And there's a yellow variant of this and also an orange variant. This one is the yellow variant. And this specific example has taken on kind of like a like a tropical type of type of look. There's also with the orange accents a black dial variant. So this one is is technically the gray, even though this one's kind of going a, more of like a tropical color. And then you have um, the black dial variant with the with the with the orange. A couple of different dial variants, and there's a, a a mass number of like variants that we could dive into and wax on about, which we won't. But the other thing too that uh, is common is that. Uh, Omega actually color coded the push buttons and the crowns on this watch. Very commonly the enamel and or paint would fall out because there, it's not really a deep recess there in the crown. So we still have the black on this, but commonly you'll have like 
the blue that falls out, which correlated with the uh, with the GMT hand, and then you had you know colored enamel in these pushers right here for the stop, start, and reset. I've only seen a few of them actually that retain the actual enamel in there. Uh, most of them, like this variant, will you know fall out inevitably over time. But Omega actually color coded the complications on um, the watch or the push buttons rather in the crown, so that you could basically refer to a manual when you were learning or wanting to learn how to operate the chronograph function. I actually really like the case size. Uh, the bracelet is similar to what you would find on, let's say like an Omega uh, Speedmaster Mark II. It's kind of that integrated-ish bracelet. It's not integrated, it actually comes off and you see quite a number of these on the, on the strap, but it's you know kind of that similar style of bracelet where it's got a straight end piece that fits into the into the, into the case. Omega actually did leverage this style of case and a couple of other watches, including I think what they call like the Mini Plo Prof or a version of the Mini Plo Prof and uh, some of the Omega Diver series. Matter of fact, there is a, a Hydra era watch um, or a Comex issued kind of dive watch that Omega had leveraged the same kind of similar weird Tanu space age kind of case for and I actually really like the case. Um, it's got some really nice geometry to it. And on the wrist, even though the case is 43 millimeters, it's, it actually fits really nicely on the wrist. It has kind of some ergonomics, I think, that were designed uh, into, the, into the case, and it kind of just feels nice on the wrist. Even though it's large, I wouldn't say that it's like obscenely overweight or bulky when on the wrist, even though it is a bit of a chunky watch. It, to me on the wrist feels quite nice and, and there's some ergonomics built into that as well. Again, the bracelet is a 1162 oval link with 172 end pieces. The 172 end pieces again are these kind of straight end pieces. Uh, on the case back of the Flight Masters, you'll see kind of like this interesting like uh, DC-8 engraving. The the case back engravings were, were pretty, pretty light so they have a tendency to wear out, uh, especially if they've been polished. So uh, you can still see the DC-8 uh, you know, jetliner engraving on the back. This one actually does have like a really interesting kind of like inventory number. So it could have been airline issued or maybe even military issued. I'm, I'm still kind of unsure, but um, it's got a very interesting uh, case back engraving. This watch uh, is in overall great condition. Um, I would say the case has been maybe lightly polished in the past, but I really like the look of the dial and I love the yellow and blue accents on this one in particular, as opposed to the you know, the black and orange accents on, on the other variant. I think this one's kind of like a, you know, kind of has like a little bit more pop to it. In any case, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. I will provide, of course, a link in the description above and below so that you can check this out and learn more, learn more about Flight Masters in general and check out this example. Uh, as always, guys, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. And if you've got watch questions, we've got answers. Hit us up at info at craftandtailor.com. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I will see you in the next one.